Hello and welcome to episode 4 of my Hearts of Iron 4 tutorial series. In this episode we're going to go over organising the army and getting it ready for war. So the first thing I'm going to do is select all the divisions I can see in France. And you'll see we've selected 53 divisions. And we've got an assortment of motorised infantry, basic infantry, colonial infantry, uh, mountain divisions, etc, etc. The first thing I'm going to do is simply select all the basic infantry. I do that by double clicking and now you see I've only got 19 divisions selected. Now I go down the bottom here and I click new army. The first thing you want to do once you've put them into an army is assign a commander. So you click the top left there and you want to pick a commander that's suited to whatever divisions are in this army. So ideally we want something that uh, boosts entrenchment and we don't want to pick uh, a general that would be better suited to commanding tanks, for example. For this one, for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to pick the person at the top. And now you can see at the bottom he's got 19 out of 24, which is the total number of divisions he can effectively command. So at the moment, he's going to be fine. If you're going to assign your troops to a sort of home guard, you might be allowed 72, depending on which of these options you picked in the battle plans. Uh, but generally speaking, you're going to have a total of 24. If you go over that 24, what you really ought to do is create a second army. Now we're going to do that process a second time over. This time I'm going to select all the tanks. Close down this army so I don't have those ones again. And then double click the tank. And then click on the bottom again for a new army. I'll name this one so we don't lose track of what it is. And assign it a commander. Again, ideally if you can find one with high breakthrough. Here we go, Panzer Leader, that's a useful trait. Uh, so that sounds ideal. Uh, depending on how much micromanaging you want to do. It may well be worth having a careful look through this list of generals. And we assign him to that army. I'm going to do that all one more time. This time I'm going to pick mechanised infantry, double click again. And this time I'm just going to right click and add them to the tank army. Oh sorry, I've done that wrong, I need to close down the other two armies in the tab. And now I just right click. And now you see I've assigned them to the tank army. This means we've now got a combined army of uh, tanks and motorised infantry, and that means the infantry that are coming with the tanks will not slow the tanks down. We want the tanks in a separate army because they're going to be your breakthrough force. If you want to break through the enemy's lines, you don't want your tanks scattered around your troops because they're not ideally suited for defence. You want your tanks available to break through into the enemy's lines. And I'm going to make one more army. Close that one, close that one. And everything that's left I'm just going to dump into one more army. I'll pick a commander again. Something's gone wrong here because I've got one tank in the wrong army, so I'll just click on that one and right click on the tank army and it will move them across. Now what we want next is an army group, which is the next level of command. Instead of a general, you're going to have a field marshal, which gives your armies yet more bonuses. So we select an army, and we select new army group to the left of it. This is just called army group 1, and now we select a field marshal to run that army group. I'm going to pick the one at the top of the list, He's got maximum entrenchment plus 30, which is fantastic, so uh, that will make a big difference. We'll come to that later on. And select him. Now, because all these troops are in France, I also want to add this army to the army group. So simply right-click in the army group, and it's joined in. You see this purple tab here. And I want the final army, and I'll right-click on that. 
So these are all in uh, the same army group now. So I've got a total of 24 troops in each, each army. And this field marshal has up to five armies that he can command. So you don't want a field marshal to have more than five armies. You don't want an army to have more than 24 divisions. The final thing when it comes to organising your armies is theatres. You can see here we've got a French theatre, and that means we can see all the troops in France at the bottom. I'm going to get rid of the one just to tidy things up. If we go down to Africa, and I select all the troops in North Africa, and I make another army for them, they've been put into the French theatre. But obviously they're not in France. Let's give them a commander. Now you can see, as I've got the army selected, there's a new theatre button. You might be concerned later in the game, uh, you were thinking, where's the new theatre button gone? But you can see it's now disappeared. You have to select an army in order for the new theatre button to come up. If you click New Theatre, now I can call this uh, North Africa. If I then select North Africa, what is currently selected, you can see I can only see this one army, which is really helpful later in the game when you've got armies everywhere. You can end up with a lot of clutter. So now we go back to the French theatre, I just select one army from it, and you can see we can no longer see the North African army at the bottom of the screen. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to organise all the armies that I've got in the whole world, uh, but I will show you how to find any remaining divisions that you might have missed. There's a button here called Unassigned Divisions at the top. If you click on that, it will take you to the next unassigned division. Clicking it again will take you to the next one, etc, etc. And it will jump you around all the unassigned divisions. So at the start of the game, you want to make sure every single division is assigned to an army. Because you get the bonuses from the general and then you get the bonuses from the field marshal. Next thing I'm going to show you is how to set commands for these armies. Uh, you don't move troops around individually. Well, you can, but generally speaking, you want to set commands for these troops. Uh, so let's take Army 1, which is going to be our best soldiers, and set up uh, where the general is decent at defending. What you want to do now is uh, use this battle plans bar at the bottom, the most simple battle plan that you must set up for any army. Uh, assuming they're going to be a frontline army, is frontline command. You can't set an offensive command until you set a frontline command. It's very important you do them in order. So you click a frontline here, and you can... It actually is quite helpful on the tooltip, it shows you what your options are. You click to make the defensive line the entire border, right click and drag to draw the defensive line along this border. So if I click, left click there, it's created a front line for me. An important thing to understand about front, line, front lines is they can only border one nation. So you'll notice it stopped at Luxembourg and it stopped uh, at Switzerland. Now let's uh, just use the delete order button. Again, the tooltip explains how it works. Delete that order. Let's do that a second time. This time we'll um, right click and drag. So I click the front line. Uh, this time I want to drag my front line from Belgium. Well, let's, actually, let's try and draw a front line from Germany to Belgium. You see it's got this little circle at the right hand side and the circle at the left hand side. But if I go further, it won't let me. That's as far as it will let me draw the line. That's because a front line command can only face one nation's uh, border. The final useful thing to show on front lines is if you select uh, front line and you drag a front line, it's helpful first of all if you only want part of the front line with that single nation, it's good to start at the middle and drag to the edge. And then you know that you've not done the front line wrong. And what you can do now is hold Alt, which brings up these dots again, and you can right click and drag the front line further which allows you to modify it later. You can drag the front line back to make it shorter again. So that's how you set a basic uh, front line. We can now take our second army, 
can click front line. We can set a front line there. You can see it says 21 divisions of that army there, 19 divisions of that army there. Uh, we're actually missing Luxembourg. Now this is where the system doesn't work quite so well because it's an absolute pain to make a special army just to cover Luxembourg. Were they hostile? Um, in this situation it doesn't actually matter because the troops defending against Germany are going to have uh, divisions, at least one division, in this region, as are these ones. So by pure luck we're actually covering that one. Uh, if you wanted you could assign a few divisions from this army to a second frontline command, but in my opinion that starts to get confusing. For example we can select this army, we can select uh, one to hold shift and select multiple divisions. Um, then we click frontline again and then we click on Luxembourg and then you can see it's not actually assigned those divisions but now I can hold control and click and it does assign those divisions. It's very hard to keep track uh, of which divisions are assigned to which front line so I don't actually recommend doing that. That's how you do it if you do want to split divisions from one army across multiple front lines. Uh, which in certain messy parts of the map you might have no choice. Uh, let's select the delete order button. Click on there. That is gone again. But you'll notice how now um, we've only got 16 divisions on this front line. So if you've lost track of which divisions are applied and which ones aren't, you double click to select all divisions in the army, you hold control, you left click, and now 19 divisions are assigned again. So for the first time in this entire tutorial series I'm going to uh, increase the game speed so we can see what the troops now do. Actually no, I'm not going to do that just yet, I'm going to, going to assign the tank army. Tank army is going to be breakthrough force so I actually want to hold them back. Uh, you've got a few options for this. You can have a fallback line or area defence. Personally, for tanks, I favour fallback line. That simply means you can draw the equivalent of a front line wherever you want. So I click that one there. I like to pick a well-supplied area so they don't drain supplies for the front line, uh, which will be a problem later on. And I right-click and drag a vague sort of line. It's not really meant for defence because this is a tank army, but it just keeps them red in this near the front lines, but not on the front lines, so they're not draining resources. If things get critical, you can of course move your tanks to the front line if you need to. So now let's unpause the game, and you'll see the troops start moving all over the place, and it's going to look like chaos at first. Uh, let's slow it down so you can see what's happening. They've all got their own individual commands of where to go, that have been assigned to them automatically. Give it time and they'll all tidy themselves out. There we go. Now it's worth noting that uh, the tactical geniuses amongst you might have noticed I haven't got any troops anywhere else in France. So if Italy wanted to invade by sea, this would be a tactical disaster. If Germany wanted to invade by sea, it would also be a tactical disaster. So realistically you don't want to put all your troops on the front line like I have done here. Now this tutorial is going on a bit, so I think I'm going to save offensive commands for the next tutorial. Um, and perhaps a few more details on how to uh, manage your troops. Um, so until the next episode, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.